थैंक यू डॉक्टर अनुज मेश्री एन ऑर्गेनाइजिंग कमिटी एंड साइंटिफिक कमिटी ऑफ अमेरिकन कॉलेज ऑफ फिजिशियन इंडियन चैप्टर थैंक्स टू डॉक्टर श्रीनिवास मूर्ति फॉर ऑर्गेनाइजिंग ए वंडरफुल मीटिंग आई एम मिसिंग योर हॉस्पिटैलिटी और आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक इन नेक्स्ट ट्वेंटी फाइव मिनट्स द प्रिसीजन मेडिसिन इन डायबिटीज इट्स वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक फॉर विच आई एम अगेन थैंकफुल टू साइंटिफिक कमिटी एंड टू डॉक्टर अनुज for choosing this very interesting topic i don't have any disclaimer to make for this particular talk the precision medicine initiative which is been a one 2015 dr uh, mr barack obama that time president he had told that tonight i am launching a new precision medicine initiative to bring us closer to curing diabetes like cancer and diabetes and i am starting by this talk with his this statement and to give us all access to the personalized information we need to keep ourselves and our families healthier and this is what he talked in 2015 when he was the president this initiative which was again published also in genetic testing and molecular biomarkers biomarkers in 2015 and it had become a talk of the town and across the world in field of medicine that now the future of medicine is a precision medicine and in field of diabetes in field of cancer where we can use this precise medicine more effectively to treat individual person very very effectively what i'll be talking in next 25 minutes what's the precision medicine is an overview the difference between precision medicine and a personalized medicine we'll be talking precision medicine in diabetes and the practice of precision medicine a patient centered approach that i'll be talking and covering in this particular talk the overview of precision medicine the joint statement which has been done by american diabetic association it, along with european association of study of diabetes it encourages clinician to consider a patient centered approach and that is what ada esd guideline we know since long but precision medicine combines individual data particularly gene biomarkers the physiological and behavioral data to predict risk and response to disease in a highly precise manner it means we have biomarkers we have gene we have a physiological data and we have a behavioral data all these four things combinedly if you have the data then probably we can practice the precision medicine which will be very very effective for predicting risk as well as response to disease when we are treating that in a highly precise manner the components of precise medicine is it's a precise diagnosis precision therapeutics it is precision prevention it is precision treatment it is precision monitoring and it is precision prognostic also so precisely for each and every person we have a diagnostic therapeutic part the preventive part the treatment the prognosis and monitoring everything could be done or in one particular field we may not have everything maybe possibly for uh, like in diabetes in a routine patient we are doing monitoring a continuous monitoring with his their behavior we are precisely monitoring them in cancer some of the genetic test is doing a precisely diagnosis for that so at this point of time it is not like that all six component of precision medicine we are using in all sub therapeutic all different sub therapy but in future maybe we will able to for each and every disease we will have precise diagnosis and we will have a precision prognostic also the precise diagnosis is a precision diagnostic redefining the characteristics characterization of a diabetes to optimize therapy or to a prognostication using information about a person unique biology environment and context the epidemiological evaluation the probability based on a clinical features and a diagnostic testing on that we can sub classify and a very uh, in a recently like a type 2 diabetes which we are treating uh, is not actually one variety it is four different varieties of type 2 diabetes which we are dealing with it is some of them a severe insulin deficient diabetes 
we have in classification there are patient who are obesity induced diabetes there are because of age related diabetes that is marked and there is a severe insulin resistance diabetes so all type 2 diabetes are actually not same and this is what precisely with their phenotype and some of the investigation we can find out they are not same they are actually different and we are dealing with four different types of diabetes and probably in future we will able to also know that which precisely which therapy will be utilized or the best for that particular subtype of type 2 diabetes the precision therapeutics will also is a tailor therapy it is the using information about person unique biology environment context to prevent or treat the disease this precisely we can prevent them and precisely we can treat it if we know that this is the uh, precise way of diagnosis or in advance we can know that these are the features by which someone can have a that particular disease and probably we will able to in future we will have a precise prevention program for that particular person and similarly as i told you the subtype 2 of subtypes of type 2 diabetes a precise treatment can be given for that particular type of person this precise prevention and precise treatment will have lot of things in between but one the best part of it there will be minimize side effects and the minimize side effects of a treatment which we are going to give to that particular person probably in future we will able to see that that every patient what we are treating with a almost same dose like we know that each and every one should be given a metformin of 500 mg three times a day or we want to give them 1 g twice daily or even maximum dose you can go for 2.5 but we don't know that whether precisely that each and every patient will require 2 g only there are patients who will require only 1500 mg or maybe 1000 or only 500 mg for a time will come that by which we will able to know that how much insulin resistance they have and how much precisely they will require insulin sensitizer for that particular therapy so that will decrease the side effect of the medication which we are giving them slightly supra therapeutic dose or in some of the patient it is given in sub therapeutic dose also the precise prognostic is also very important that who are the one who are going to develop the complication like simple example of diabetes some of the type 1 diabetes even with the duration of 10 15 20 years they don't develop microvascular complication even some of the type 2 diabetes nothing with the duration even with the newly diagnosed patient they come with the complication or many of the patient they have with the neuropathy some of the patient with longer duration of diabetes with relatively uncontrolled diabetes don't develop neuropathy and some of the patient well controlled diabetes with a shorter duration of diabetes also develop neuropathy it means there are some other factors other than the duration and hyperglycemia may be responsible for these complication and this precise prognosis who will develop what type of complication probably a future will come that we will able to know that this particular person is more prone to develop microvascular complication or a macrovascular complication and that is what we are moving forward in near future the difference between precise medicine and personalized medicine that's also very much slightly there is a difference for that what is precision medicine it depends on data analytics and information while personalized medicine is approaches genetic epigenomic clinical information to customize treatment decision a personalized medicine also have here a patient preference it means you have decided that this should be the treatment for one particular person but but the personalized medicine will also have his own preference like i want to give someone the best treatment is today like 780g for a type 1 diabetic patient yeah. a insulin infusion pump but that may not be his preference his belief he believe is that i does not want a pump his attitude his knowledge about that particular thing or his social context will not decide that particular precise medicine which we are choosing and that is what a personalized medicine where you have to involve whatever the medication which we are deciding as per the data and analytics it should be also involved with the doc patient and according to his preference and beliefs attitude knowledge social or psychosocial effect of the i mean his environment and uh, the economic part of it will decide the therapy and that is what we call is personalized medicine there is a bottleneck in bringing precise medicine in practice so one of the biggest bottleneck at this point of time it is very much new concept for diabetologists 
Second biggest bottleneck is genetics is not a part of routine clinical testing. We don't do for each and every patient. We may do some analytics, some information, some continuous glucose monitoring, but not genetics. Except at this point of time, I can say MODI is one diagnosis, which is a clinical diagnosis. Then we confirm it with uh, genetic testing and there we can say that yes they are precisely diagnosed what type of modi and which therapy will be used for that type of patient the other is defining like etiological subgroup of type 2 diabetes but at this point of time we are just classifying them with the phenotype but probably in near future we will able to know that who is developing why a lean person is developing diabetes what is the defect is which is happening in that particular person even the c peptide is not subnormal or not very low or not like type 1 diabetes why he is developing diabetes the lack of marked difference in the treatment response in type 2 diabetes we had seen the patients who are responding to glp1 analog with a weight reduction of 20 kg we have seen the patient with a glp analog with only 2 kg weight reduction so why there is so much difference in the same therapy even we are choosing a right kind of patient so there we will able to know that precisely why some patients are not uh, getting the response or they are getting more side effects these are the bottlenecks at this point of time and we don't have answer even we are talking for precision medicine or precision diabetology but there is a definite positive shift which had come from personalized medicine to precision medicine we are trying for each and every one a personalized therapy that is what individualized treatment which is now no more only uh, uh, the guideline based therapy but we would like to treat each and every person with a very much personalized or individualized approach but with that we are moving from individualized or a personalized approach to precision medicine and that is what a future is of precision medicine the precision medicine in diabetes if i talk this was one of the paper which was uh, published in 2016 in diabetes a precision medicine a future in diabetes care uh, a foundation of precision medicine in diabetes as i told you it was in monogenic diabetes which was now we can definitely diagnose with the persons with a which type of monogenic diabetes they have the neonatal diabetes before we were having the genetic testing for neonatal diabetes we all were treating these neonatal type diabetes like a insulin deficient diabetes the metformin resistance probably we will able to know with the uh, genetic testing also and in future we will also able to know the different type of therapy which we are using probably which particular medicine will be used for which type of person and how much dose and how effective it will be what will be the side effects whether how we can avoid those side effects and we can um, stop unnecessary medicine which may not be useful for that particular patient the heterogeneity of diabetes it's clearly been lagging behind cancer during the last 100 years the diagnosis of diabetes has largely been based on a single metabolite measurement that of glucose at present we have only the glucose measurement which gives us that this is diabetes there is a classification as per world health organization is type 1 and type 2 secondary and during pregnancy refined classification of diabetes especially type 2 diabetes could provide a powerful tool to facilitate the implementation of precision medicine from diagnosis in the same manner as a genetic diagnosis of monogenic forms of diabetes which is modi will guide clinician to i am more optimal treatment for our patients the precision medicine Recently, one paper in 2020, they had come out with a consensus report. Again, with ADA and ESD had come out with a consensus. What should be the precision medicine in diabetes? And the precision medicine in diabetes initiative, the idea of precision diabetes medicine is gaining momentum based upon the uh, promise of reducing the enormous and growing burden of diabetes worldwide. To address this, the Precision Medicine in Diabetes Initiative was launched in 2018 by ADA in partnership with ESD and this PMDI has partnered subsequently with other organizations across the world including JDRF and NIDDK of US. The role of pharmacogenetic study is we can have a patient stratification identify the right patient then the target identification ensure the discovery of novel drug that can illustrate the mechanism of action and open new therapeutic avenues and a functional characterization which provide insight with respect to the mode of action of the gene product on or the cell type in which it is expressed so right medication to the right person at the right time is that is what the pharmacogenetic study and that is what we want for our 
diabetic patients and there's the future of precision diabetology. The Global Precision Medicine Initiative, some initiative have been built new cohorts from scratch. Most initiative have been lever, uh, leveraged on the existing data from biobanks and across the world, there are a lot of uh, things are happening in this particular uh, graph. I'm just showing that how many uh, places in the world where a lot of things are happening. Unluckily, uh, in India, very few centers in precision diabetology. I know from Dr. V. Mohan Center had recently started even in a clinic also in his old center, a precision medicine center also. And uh, he's working with ICMR on an uh, advanced center for genetic testing where we are sending for our for even monogenic diabetes, which is completely free. So the precision medicine in diabetes management, the drive to develop precision medicine for diabetes is based on major technological advances. The advances like um, genetic testing, which is omics assay, wearable devices to know the behavior, to know the sleep pattern, to know the pulse, to know the sympathetic activity, to know the um, exercise and uh, digital imaging or to do the continuous glucose monitoring, which gives you a lot of information. And accordingly, we can decide the precision nutrition. We can decide the precisely uh, the therapy also. Like in continuous glucose monitoring, you know that who are the ones who are getting post meal glucose level very high. So it is the nutrition and then where the alpha glucosidase inhibitor will be the most effective. I mean, that type of patients, you can decide with doing their continuous glucose monitoring. The path to precision medicine in type 2 diabetic patients, we start from the uh, continuous monitoring with multiple variable devices, with patient feedback, with patient engagement, because he has to get engaged, he has to put a lot of things on also on the on app or on a different way by which he can communicate to the, his clinician. And on that basis, we can treat the patient precisely and one of the best example which i can give you with artificial intelligence in type 1 diabetic patients particularly those who are on pump therapy before some time we used to put the patients on a pump and then every time patient has to calculate that how much he is eating and how much insulin dose he has to take and how he has to decrease his basal or bolus dose or increase his basal or bolus dose according to his seeing his continuous glucose monitoring data and it was real difficult for clinician not only for patient, but for clinician also, it was very, very difficult to get the best control for even a patient who are on pump on continuous glucose monitoring with artificial intelligence and with precision diabetology. Now our patient to whom we are putting with 780G, the pump itself decides that how much dose person is going to have. He will decide, the pump will decide that how much basal dose is to be continued for that particular patient. So the precision medicine, with it, artificial intelligence, with the patient behavior, which patient have in one month or every day, the next day accordingly, uh, the change will be there. And that is what precision medicine happen in type 1 diabetes. Precision medicine at this point of time is in different stages of diabetes. As I told you already for Modi, we have uh, well uh, accepted that. But still at this point of time, we have only 18 varieties of Modi genes which we can diagnose. But in future, probably we will have more such gene which may be responsible for this monogenic diabetes. The genomic variants will predict the type 2 diabetic patients who are with after genetic risk score. So who will be developing diabetes, maybe with genomic uh, variants or with genetic study, we will able to know. Even we will also able to know genetic analysis that who are the one who are going to develop the risk of complication. And response of drugs and in how much dose, which particular molecule will be the most effective. And we may not give the unnecessarily the medication which are not effective for that particular person. That is the real future for a precision medicine. The advantage will be, it will be more scientific and specific diagnosis. It will give a more personalized care and a better quality of life. The change of therapy will become much easier for them and a better control of diabetes, leading to reduced risk of diabetes related complication. Precision medicine in futuristic model, there are like different subtypes of diabetes you can diagnose with them, with proteomics, genomics, epigenetics, metabolics. We will able to know with their electronic medical records that which particular person is going to have the best treatment. This is one paper which has been published by Dr. V. Mohan recently in 2019. The useful for precision medicine in monogenic diabetes, as I already explained you for neonatal diabetes and MODI, uh, which is 
well accepted and dr v mohan in his paper he talked about this genetic study uh, which he is doing at his center uh, in precision medicine in precision diabetology and across the country those who are suspected with monogenic diabetes they can send their sample free of charge and we can know that which are the patient to whom we should send for monogenic diabetes and that will become real future particularly for those young to whom we are suspecting either type 1 and type 2 rather monogenic diabetes and they are the one who can be just treated with a sulfonylurea they don't need uh, insulin they don't need uh, even your metformin they just need sulfonylurea only the practicing precision medicine will be very much patient centric approach it will definitely very much personalize it will be uh, a right patient for a uh, right therapy uh, for a right time of therapy which is will be also decided but there will be lot of patient rights will be also there patient has to give lot of information to get all these Uh, precise medicine for that particular patient and patient how to become very responsible also like his active participation is very very important because unless he will have a active participation we will not able to know that how his behavior is and how we can decide precise medicine for that particular patient the similar way there are physician rights also in patient personalized medicine and there are responsibilities the responsibilities are the knowing the patient as an individual that is the one of the most important responsibility of physician understanding the environment and the lifestyle of the patient that's again very very important for each and every patient the environmental factors are different the lifestyle of a person is also very different and that is what we are doing as a personalized medicine too emphasizing and knowing the patient concern and that is what when we are talking of precision medicine to the precision uh, personalized medicine the patient concerns are also very important it is the cost it may be uh, sometimes they don't want uh, injection sometimes they don't want uh, the lifestyle to be changed so that patient concerns are very important discussing the patient need and gaining the knowledge of direct to consumer genetic testing this is a very important example of precision diabetes Uh, a paper which is published from uh, Sweden, and then a similar type of paper which was published from India also by Dr. V. Mohan. The type two diabetes is not a single disease; rather, it is it consists of multiple subtypes of diabetes. It is obesity induced. It is severely insulin resistant. It is age related diabetes, or it is severely insulin deficient diabetes. Also, this was as I told you, Mohan had also published the similar paper from their. Uh, group and they had talked about the novel subgroup and there they found there is a one unique uh, variety of insulin deficient diabetes in our country where they have insulin deficient with insulin resistant and that variety was not there in the sweden group so i mean again because we could do a similar paper and we could find out that we in indian type 2 diabetic patients are again different from the type 2 diabetes patients from a caucasian population even we have also the four variety of patient but one variety which is very unique to india which is combined insulin deficient with combined insulin resistance the treatment response based approach in a precision medicine in type 2 diabetic patients like you are just doing a simple information which we are doing in our day to day clinical practice we also get some physiological markers in some of the patient either clinically by insulin resistance or by no doing their c peptide but we are not doing for each and every patient the genetic epigenetics and pharmacogenomics and this could be a future this will make our treatment more precise for future at this point of time it is also very much individualized therapy because for each and every patient we wanted to know their egfr we wanted to know the comorbidities we wanted to know their insulin deficiency we do that age sex anthropometric data and we try to treat them but in future there will be a, a genetics epigenetic epigenetics and pharmacogenomics will decide that who are the one who will have better response and who are the one who will not have the response with this this is one more paper which they have written uh along with dr b mohan the radha who is a senior scientist from molecular genetics from the mdrf chennai she has written that precision diabetes is slowly becoming a reality this paper has been in 2019 but probably in another 10 years it may be a real 
reality and we may treat our diabetic patient down the line in a decade or in a five years or 10 years down the line in a different way the way we are treating today so to conclude mm -hmm. my talk precision diabetes medicine has evolved and now may be applied to all forms of diabetes it involves precision diagnosis therapeutics prognosis and monitoring with respect to type 2 diabetes there are different clusters of diabetes have been seen and two unique clusters, as i told you in india we could find out a, in uh, in one of the study, the precise diagnosis of monogenic diabetes may help children with neonatal diabetes and MODI and to go off with the insulin and to start them only on sulfonylurea. A collaborative, comprehensive research-based approach involving all stakeholders is necessary for implementation of precision medicine, medicine, uh, precision diabetes medicine to clinical practice. Certainly, the future of diabetes will become a precision medicine. With this, I thank once again, thank you,